Welcome everyone to this episode of the Mortgages by Gretchen show, where I talk to real people who are in the field of real estate or related to real estate, and they are experts and are very generous and willing to share their knowledge and their wisdom with us all here. And the goal of the show is for you to get some information and tips to help you with your goals in owning real estate, owning a business, and to take some guesswork out of what to do or who to call when you have questions. And today I'm very happy to have Anna, Anna Re, can you pronounce your name for me, Anna? Make sure sure. I say Anna Rija. Anna Rija, thank you, with me. And uh, I have known Anna for a while. I just never thought to ask her how to pronounce her name. Um, Anna is a business development manager with CIBC Business Banking for Scarborough and the Durham market. And I met Anna uh, through a mutual contact and um, she was very kind. She's been great about we work, working together to try to help business owners with various um, needs. And so I'm very impressed with her knowledge, her passion, um, her ability to connect people and just having a really great um, presence and attitude. Uh, I just love being around Anna. She's an amazing, enthusiastic person. And so Anna, I'm gonna let you also introduce yourself and give any background um, before I ask you some questions. Thanks Gretchen for having me over for this virtual chat. Um, and I'm also very, very happy to have met you. I know we connected immediately. I like the way that you have empathy. Uh, for someone that's about to start uh, to own a business, a property, that you give the best advice in their best interest. And so that's what attracted me to you know, start working with you and to continue working with you. Um, so I am part of the CIBC business banking team. I always like to say that uh, when you look for a bank, look for someone that is beyond just offering financing and then just say goodbye and see you next year. Look for someone that's going to be your partner. Um, for example, let's say, oh, I'm spending a new contract. I don't know whether I should sign that contract, whether I'm able to meet that contract. Of course, you have your accountant, your um, operations manager, your team, but look at your business advisor as part of that team. Uh, your business advisor can bring um, expertise such as cash flow. Um, you can go through your business advisor and they can show you this is the impact on your cash flow. So this is what you need to bear in mind if you take this additional contract. These are the parameters that you can change to make this cash flow better so you can take up this contract. So look at your business advisor, not just someone to borrow money from or to call up that my credit card got declined, can you help me? It's not just servicing and financing, but it's a lot of advisory. So my passion is to help business owners achieve their ambitions. Um, and then I help not just my clients and prospects throughout the pandemic. I immediately got on the phone and then just opened up Google and just call various business owners around, you know, from Pickering to Oshawa and just say, you know, my name is CI, uh, Anna from CIBC. I know you're not a client, but I just wonder if you know your options out there with regards to all the government programs to help you in this time of need. So I did a lot of that because there's not much the business development I can do. What I can do in the meantime is to offer advice so that we can all you know, get out of this together and then come out of the water together. I love and that. That's it. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I, I do get that from you as well. It's not just a one-time transaction. It's about you really do want to help people in the long run and um, be a true partner. That's awesome. Uh, so what is business banking and is it something for all business owners or do they need to be a certain size? What's it all about? Well, of course, different banks have different ways of categorizing business owners and different job families. But um, CIBC specific, um, we look for business owners that needs a minimum of $100,000 in terms of financing needs uh, or they want to place a deposit of $250,000 or that we see in the next two or three years, they're gonna get there. So we want them, we want to help them get there. The reason why we do this is because it's a really boutique one-to-one -one experience that you have with business banking at CIBC. There is a dedicated advisor, including me. So you have two person on your team and each business advisor only has a maximum number of clients in their books. If they have more clients, it has, they have to hire somebody else because we want quality over quantity. And because of that, um, we have to kind of divide the business owners uh, into different groups. One, retail business owners where you go to the branch and you just, uh, you meet the customer service representative. 
Then you have the business banking team for, you know, with business needs of $100,000 minimum. And then you also have the commercial banking. And the commercial banking has different sizes too. We have commercial banking independent businesses where they need a minimum of about a million to $5 million. And then you have a, a different segment, which is above $5 million to $50 million because they have different needs, they have bigger markets. So they need different, more specialized advisory um, that can tailor them when it comes to, let's say, foreign exchange, um, a dedicated foreign exchange help desk, and so on and so forth. So the reason why we do it is to make sure that each business owner gets what they need and we can tailor effectively. Okay. And if it's a startup, um, I guess it depends how big a startup it is, but what, how would that process look like if someone comes to you up front, they're just either already started the business or they're creating the business? How do you support them? And what, what's the um, startups? We always do CSBFL. We tend to prefer uh, CSBFP, Canada Small Business Financing Program. Um, it is a program designed by the government that makes it easier, uh, give them easier access to financing because the government access a guarantor of 75% of that loan amount. Um, for startups, if you are buying a franchise, you immediately become a business banking client. Okay. Uh, if you are a professional, uh, you are opening your dental practice, you immediately become a business banking client because we know that where you're going to get there pretty fast. Um, and with regards to startups, we take care of the doctors before they become the doctors. So they enjoy the fantastic rates as a student. Uh, you're a dental student, you're a medical student, you have prime minus um, 0.25 and you pay only interest 24 months to graduation, then we move you to, to become, a, you know, to offer your home mortgages. We take care of you from student to starting out your career to opening your practice. So that certain blocks and certain types of industry becomes a business banking client from the start. And then some of them later on graduate to become commercial banking clients with, you know, a whole different suite of advisory that they need especially when they open a second practice and so on and so forth. Okay, all right. And so as far as different financing solutions, I guess um, it depends on the business and as far as what, what type of products you offer. Correct, and it doesn't have to be like a huge franchise. You can say, I wanna open a Boost Juice. We have franchise package for, for someone that wants to start uh, just, just, you know, just a kiosk in the mall. So okay. it doesn't mean it has to be a big thing because we have all these relationships that we have signed with franchisors. So we want to make sure their franchisees are taken care of. So it can be a startup. I've uh, never really owned a business, but I have a lot of management experience. I've worked at a restaurant before. I've been a manager at a restaurant, but now I want to open my own. I want to open just, you know, bagels. Uh, and it's one of our, one of the franchises that we sign up with. And so immediately becomes a business banking client. Okay. But if they're a smaller, say one-off restaurant, they wouldn't necessarily, you'd look at the whole scenario. We look at the whole scenario, um, but they're, they're still a business advisor at the branch. So it's not that you are left alone, lost out there. We work with our partners. So we have our retail banking um, service representatives at the branch. And then we always work together. So it can be, I, they just want a few thousand dollar loan to start with. Um, I've pro helped process, and all the business advisors are the same, help process $10,000 credit. We work together. It's just that you don't have that particular business advisor on call. That's okay. the only thing. So when you say retail, it doesn't necessarily mean retail, like retail meaning a store. It's retail meaning it's a branch representative. Yes. Okay. So okay. you make the point of branch representative, do a joint call with the business advisor to help the credit but you just don't have that business advisor on the call. It's, it's not like a 5 p.m. Anna, I have this problem. Can you solve this? That's how, that comes from business banking and, you know, because okay. we can't hire enough people for a one-to-one -one relationship. Makes sense. Makes sense. You got to use your resources wisely. Yes. Okay. So what are the most common challenges that you see that business owners face and how do you help turn them into opportunities? I, well, we see, we, we use the cash flow planning tool a lot. 
and then we want to help them find the inefficiencies. Uh, we just like you, you don't want them, you don't want to push a loan to them. And that's it. Because if they fall, you also fall in the end. So we want to look um, at any efficiencies and then turn it into something that can be better. Uh, for example, I had a pharmacist that wanted uh, more financing, but I don't see the justification for that. I, and it's not that he doesn't qualify for it, but I don't see the point of borrowing more money. So we brought a team, we analyzed um, how he managed his business and uh, we did a cash flow pattern tool. We found that there's his inventory days are sky high compared to his peers because we have a lot of research companies. So we bring that information. So we're saying that find, hire a consultant to find out which inventory that's just collecting dust. It's not moving and that's, what's causing your cash flow issues right now. And then we see that there's a better way to manage your receivables. We have all these cash management tools to collect it faster for you. So all of that, and then instead of borrowing money and paying interest, is just figuring out how to make things more efficient. That's and really then, great. Yeah, and then that's how we help turn around. And we also like to connect clients to other clients. And we say like, you know what? I have this client that can help you in um, social uh, media. And then we say, let me check with her. She's okay with that. And then we connect them. So we That's try great. to make clients, you know, work together and create a community with each other as well for support. That is really amazing. And that's a lot of uh, advice and help that is fantastic that I didn't realize even, you know, go to those efforts. So that's, that's fantastic. Because, yeah, you want to see them succeed and get off on the right foot. And that's really valuable. So um, awesome. So for business owners who are buying homes for themselves or an income property, like a rental property, what mm -hmm. should they keep in mind when they're making that purchase? Um, well, firstly, if the business owner is buying the property and then wants to operate out of it, um, there are options such as the kind of small business financing program. Um, and, and in that sense, we look at that business as being the primary source of repayment. So we would be asking for the projections and the cash, um, the cash flow projections. And there's a track record the last two years financial to see that it's going to thrive at this location as well. But if you're buying purely for rental income, we, at the moment, because of the situation right now, we would prefer a building that's already tenanted. And uh, we also look at the tenants, the kind of industry the tenant is in, uh, whether they can weather the storm, the current storm right now, and make the, you know, the rent um, for the business, uh, for the buyer, and therefore the buyer can meet the repayment obligation to the bank. So the, because that's the primary source of repayment is the is the rental income. So okay. it's something you have to bear in mind. And in terms of collateral, that is the collateral. So if you are starting out and you say, I do not want to give my up my house to buy another property, that property that you're buying is the collateral. So you don't need another collateral. Okay. So say they're initially they're making this purchase though of uh, their home or their rental, and they're not really in their mind thinking of it as sort of connected to their business. But I think from what you've said and what you've told me in the past, it's good to kind of think ahead that because if they are at some point going to want that loan for their business or something, they may need to use that primary home as a source of collateral. So to keep it in mind, they maybe should try to stay with the same lender for that they're gonna maybe work with in the future for the business. Does that sound pretty accurate? If you're gonna take a business loan and um, that business loan most likely will be asking for collateral. Let's say you, let's say you wanna open up a restaurant three years from now and you kind of figure out I would need um, $300,000 for equipment, uh, another $300,000 for leasehold improvement, I need $600,000. Um, I'm, it, it's a franchise so it's going to be, you know, quite easy to get uh, relatively compared to just a, a new, your own idea. But still, the bank will be asking for a piece of asset to secure. So I know I'm going to do that in three years from now. And I want, so there are two ways. If you already know that a particular bank is going to be a great 
bank for your business banking needs, it would be a good idea to have your mortgage with that bank as well, your personal home mortgage that you're buying right now. However, of course, you're shopping around and then you say like, okay, bank B is where I'm going to do my business banking. But right now, bank A is offering great rates for home mortgages. Don't tie yourself for more than three years because a bank, a business banking uh, team uh, will be asking for the collateral and no bank wants to come second. So you would have to pay breakage fees from another bank to bring it over. Just simply that if you're taking a loan with CIBC uh, and you're offering your house as a form of security, the house has a mortgage with RBC, you would need to break your mortgage with RBC and bring it over to CIBC and vice versa. You're going for a loan with another bank, but your mortgage is CIBC, that bank will say break the mortgage to CIBC bring that over. So if you can plan ahead, I'm going to do this in three years from now. So I'm only going to sign up for three years. So after three years, I'm free. I can move without breakage fee. Or maybe do a variable rate, which has lower penalty to break. Correct. Interest. Correct. I, I just refinanced my, my own house and it was just a $3,900 break. So it was worth it to move my yeah. mortgage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. So that's good to tell people plan, plan ahead. Sure. I look at your whole picture at the same time. So that's good. Um, okay. And I kind of, um, and what would your advice be with someone if they're considering investing in commercial property? I know we discussed about tenants, but I think that on my mind, we were talking more about residential, but on the commercial side, um, maybe you can expand about that and the tenants or what else they should keep in mind if buying commercial property. For example, I mean, at the current rates, let's say you're asking for a loan of Five hundred to five hundred fifty thousand dollars, a business loan to buy a commercial property, um, and then the primary source of repayment would be the rental income. So it will be it's a good idea to have um, the building already tenanted for the next few years, uh, especially the years that you are the next three years at least, and and then it's actually how we work it out is we look at how much the repayment is going to be per year, and you have to be over a certain point. So for 500, 520, 550, uh, we look at this, this ratio called debt service coverage. And then from there, we flip it and we see you need to have $48,000 of rental income from this property to have this loan. Um, and what's your debt service coverage? Is, is there a kind of a minimum ratio that you're looking for? Uh, we look at about 1.3 when it comes to um, uh, commercial properties. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We don't know what explain what the one point three means in terms of. Um, we look at how many times the income is over the debt. I mean, if it's just a simple other kind of business loan, we look at your revenue and we add back interest depreciation to see your real revenue, and then uh, we 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 get the the repayment terms for the loan that you're applying for. It has to be the number of times over that repayment so basically uh, two, two to one will be an ideal you know you want to we would love to see someone that can say i want to repay the repayment of is ten thousand dollars a month and then my income is twenty thousand dollars so that's fantastic two to one but 1.32 is something that we can accept um, because it's a collab because it is a building and then so uh, because I actually just I'm actually just doing something that's about five hundred twenty thousand dollars. So that's why I have the numbers in my head. It's not because I'm a math genius, but <laughs> <laughs> so the repayment terms and it works out like um, that. Uh, total rental income for this three-story building has to be four thousand dollars a month, gross, not net. Perfect. And then they can discuss the numbers with you before they make the purchase and. Yes, that. correct. So even actually that offer fell through someone else is buying that property now. But he's looking now he has an idea. So when he shops around for the, an, another building is that okay, what's the who are the tenants? What am I getting from here? So it'll be a faster, um, a faster process because of that. Okay, perfect. Um, so what's your last piece of advice for Canadians right now? Also for me, take some time for yourself um you know do the things that you love i love to read books um and then you know sometimes i take a night off just to read books and do netflix binging or um i started a new hobby i started baking uh, because of the pandemic 
um, because you know, it's, you know, what do I do a Friday night, Saturday night? You know, there's only so many board games I can play with my kids. You know, they're in bed right now. What do I do? Um, I bake. So find something to occupy your time that makes you happy because we need to be in a happy state of mind to move forward. This will, in this will pass. This will pass. And of course, find support, whether it's a virtual book club, um, you know, Zoom calls. Although some people say they have talked more with their family and seen more of their family through Zoom than they ever did before the pandemic. Because there is that, okay, now we can just Zoom. We don't have to drive over. But find your support, find your, you know, your tribe to help you through this. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Anna. Thank you for that advice and all of your tips. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be really interested, especially those who maybe are just embarking on new businesses or commercial purchases. Um, you're giving a lot of amazing advice. So thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me.